Nui, did you just poo? Did you just poo? All right, let us begin, let us begin. Just a quick note here, this entire video was shot on the X100V except for these parts here. Like anytime you see me in this frame, I'm using my X-H2S, my X100V is on the counter over there. As far as the shots from the X100V, there were minor adjustments made in Final Cut, nothing crazy, like we're talking contrast, a little bit of saturation and exposure. There was also no stabilization added in post. So what you're looking at is exactly what came from the sensor. We're getting ready to go to Squamish. You wanna to go to Squamish? Come on. Let's go. Since I published my video about using the X100V for video, a lot of people have been asking me how I use it for video. And in this video, I hope to break down my process, my recipe, and my approach to making videos with the Fujifilm X100V. All right, guys, let me come inside. The single best reason to shoot video for me on the X100V, besides its portability, is the fact that it has a built-in ND filter. This is quite essential for getting the cinematic look. You can get great footage without using the 180 degree shutter rule, which if you don't know what that is, then just ignore this part of the video. But basically what I'm saying is that a lot of great creators make great videos without using ND filters. And I don't think it's a make or break but the fact that this camera has a built-in ND filter makes it so much easier to get that cinematic looking image. And it just makes the camera that much more enjoyable to use. You don't have to, like on this camera, for example, I've got an ND filter on the front here. If this wasn't on here, then the exposure would be pretty crazy. So right now I'm using a two to five stop. You drop it in like that and it looks normal. We're able to shoot at 2.8 outside because of this. We decided to head off to Squamish, BC for the day to hang out and just change up the scenery a bit. I didn't end up shooting much when we got there, but I felt like I got some decent cinematic footage and felt compelled to share with you my exact settings for getting the footage that you're watching right now. When it comes to cinematics, less is more. Which leads me to my first piece of advice. Let it breathe. Sometimes you just gotta let the footage breathe. No music, no distractions, just some solid sound effects and good shots. Besides all the settings, what really makes a video cinematic is being able to drive your story through audio, through storytelling, but also through visual storytelling. And the best way that you can do that is by sequencing. To me, this is the single most important thing that you can do to make your videos look more cinematic. You should always be thinking in sequences, meaning a few shots that give context to what you're trying to tell. The basic example, and I'm stealing this term from Andy too, is called the three piece special. And what that is, is your three shots. You've got a wide, a medium, and a tight. And you should be kind of thinking about that all the time when you're out. This is the foundation of how I think about every scene. In context, I like to think of it more as the establishing shot, the subject, and then a detail. It's 
particularly helpful to shoot like this when you're shooting with something like an X100V that doesn't have the in-body stabilization. And what I mean by that is you can't be relying on just carrying the camera and pushing through because the footage won't be enjoyable to watch. So you have to think of ways that you can keep the viewer engaged by changing the angles, but really showing what you're trying to show from many different angles. It gives people more of a reason to watch and feel engaged, and they won't really think about that the camera is locked off and not moving. All camera movement should have a purpose. So sometimes there's a purpose for having the frantic shake moving around the frame while you're walking, and it creates this sort of anxiety and this tension, but you don't want that to be the entire viewing experience. You want to reserve that for the moments that you want to feel more raw and more frantic. It, buddy. The second way to get even better results for video on the X100V is to use this. This is the WCL, the 28 millimeter conversion lens for the X100V. Simply put, this is an attachment that takes the native 35 millimeter lens built into that and turns it into a 28 millimeter equivalent. It definitely takes away from the compactness of the camera, but I think it adds two things that I think are essential for getting cinematic video on the X100V. The first thing that it does is it gives you a wider field of view. So with that wider field of view, you're going to experience way less camera shake. It's still there, but it's not as noticeable. And then number two, with this wider field of view on the X100, it actually it bulks up the camera a little bit and adds some weight, which will also help with the stabilization because you'll get rid of those micro jitters and it will look more like traditional handheld footage. simulations are the core of what makes this work and I've dialed in a pretty good one that looks great out of the camera but also allows you to tweak and change it if you feel necessary in post. Here is the actual recipe that I use. For movie settings I use 4k 23.98. The film simulation is a turna. For my white balance I will use auto balance the reds over to 6 and the blues to minus 8. This changes based on the look but this is what I found to be pretty good. The dynamic range is 400, the tone curve is H minus 2 and S minus 2, the color is plus 4, the sharpness minus 2, noise reduction minus 2. The only thing that I'm using on my camera that you can't do inside the camera is using this Moment Cinebloom 10% filter. It just gives it a little bit of a blooming, softing effect. You don't really need it, but if you have one, throw it on there. And that is pretty much it. My cinematic steps for shooting with the Fujifilm X100V. If you like this video, I've actually made a playlist right here that includes some more videos that talk more in depth on the philosophy of shooting video with this camera, but also why I love shooting the 28mm so much. And at the same time, if you liked watching this video, consider tapping my face right here and subscribing for more videos in the future. I used to do daily vlogging. I'm not doing that much anymore, but I feel like the quality of the content is getting up. That's just my opinion. Leave yours below, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye.